What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Randy here, RTSMobile.com, bringing you a quick video on how to stay alive as a miner in this game. If you're mining in low sec, you can see I'm currently in 0.3 sec, mining some spudumain. Uh, these tips are going to really help you make sure that you don't die, because it's very easy to die as a miner in low sec or null sec environment. So if you couldn't tell, we are playing some Eve Echoes, and I am out here mining with my little Venture 3. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to show you my fittings, and I'm going to show you how I'm staying alive, okay? So the first thing I've got, of course, is going to be my fittings, right? These are the, just the standard MK5 miners. Um, these are just good efficiency for mining. They're better than the MK3s. Uh, once I hit Tier 7, I'll get the MK7s, or I might switch to strips. Who knows? But as far as survivability... We don't care about that. What we do care about is down here, our power, uh, low, uh, our low fittings, which is going to be the MK1 Workhorse Stabilizer, and uh, this is going to keep it from getting jammed. Since the ship already has an inherent two warp stability, I don't necessarily need to get um, to get this as the uh, the MK5 or, or the or the Angel, which gives the the negative two warp jammer strength plus another negative two on activation. Um, so, again, if I do activate this, uh, after 10 seconds, I'll have four warp jammer resistance, which means I can get out of two people that are both using tier two warp disruptors on me. That's about the most sophisticated attack you're ever going to get at as a miner, um, so you should be safe with that four warp stability. The next one uh, item I want to talk about here is going to be um, your reactive shield armor. And this is something, by the way, that you can have activated the entire time you're mining. Um, this should last you probably about 25 to 30 minutes, and you'll still be at maybe 20% capacitor after that, and that's how long I found it takes to get a full load of sputamine anyways. Um, <clears throat> so again, I can just activate this the whole time, and every single activation, oh, and there's a person, see? So you just got to watch what you're doing, and whenever someone blinks in, just be ready to warp out. And you can see he's actually really far away from me, because of my current positioning, my current positioning is I've traveled below the asteroid field in a manner that is difficult for them to get to me upon warping into the asteroid field. So that'll give you that essential 15-20 second buffer before they can get within range to attack you, and give you time to get away. Now you cannot AFK mine, but it's pretty close, meaning you only have to look at the phone once every 30 seconds or so and see if someone's coming for you, okay? Um... I'm going to move over to a different cluster here, I suppose, if that one's already been beat up. And uh, you're going to see me position myself. This is a great opportunity for me to position myself. Uh, and you're going to see me really make use of that. So anyways, back to the uh, the shield hardener. I mean the armor heal. The, 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 the reactive shield hardener. This just gives me a static damage resistance. And it is going to slowly shift its resistance towards the damage type I'm taking. Um, additionally, I would definitely use the shield booster. Um, because of my energy requirements on this ship, I actually have quite a bit of extra energy, so I was able to equip a medium shield booster, uh, which means I'm going to get significantly more bang for my buck as far as actual shield um, regeneration. So I'm just going to go here and look for some spudamains. There's one. There's two. They're pretty close together, so now I'm going to go ahead and kind of pivot myself between them and kind of go at a 45 degree angle to the position I just warped into, okay? Because what again, what I would, oop, I locked the wrong uh, wrong thing there. Um, so again, the, the, the goal here is to get yourself into a position where you, uh, you are between your two targets, that way when one gets eaten up, you can just kind of swap over to the other target. But you want to get yourself far enough away from, um, I'm kind of going to a weird angle here. You want to get yourself far enough away from the entry point that you warped in at. That way, again, you can kind of steal that an extra 15, 20 seconds of time before the enemy ships can even get close to you, okay? Uh, and then the bigger the ship they are, the harder it is to get close to you, right? So as you can see, I'm kind of just setting myself up here. Now I'm, I'm very far below. I'm very nicely positioned below the asteroid field, you can see here. So if someone warps in over here, they're going to be, you know... 30, 40 km away, just like this guy is, they're going to be 30, 40 km away, uh, km away from me and unable to target me and kill me right away. So now that I've hit kind of the point I want to be at, I'm going to, oops, no, I hit the unlock button. 
I'm trying to just stop myself. Oh my god, stop, 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 stop. No! Alright, okay, this isn't. I need to need to get back with an 18 km here. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh stop myself now that I'm positioned well below what I need. Again, I'm just moving myself back into range. Okay, we're good. We're going to stop right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and halt myself 18 to 19 km below the asteroid field. Um, again, the whole goal is to make sure that we are able to get away from somebody who warps in and we're far enough away that they can't catch us, okay? So you can now clearly see the mining positioning that I've taken. You can you saw those. Uh, this is really the most effective way to do it. Um, no matter where they are, they're going to pour it in somewhere on this plane, on this top plane up here, right? That you can kind of see all the asteroids are level with. I'm well below the plane, so your global positioning is going to be super key to surviving when mining. Okay, don't just pour it in and start mining because you're going to die. Uh, but back to my fittings. Now I got a couple seconds to show you. Again, I was able to put on the medium shield booster, which gives a massively increased amount of shield boost compared to the small shield booster. Um, it does use a little bit of energy, but really, since you're going to be warping out, you only need it to tick once or twice, and that once or twice tick, I have more than enough capacitor to use it, and thus, that is a highly um, tanky fitting setup for the, for the venture. Additionally, I am running um, overall shield bonus HP, so my hit points to my shield have increased by 20%, in addition to my armor. Same thing, oh, sorry, my structure, same thing. It's going to increase by 20%, so that gives me a nice little cushion. Pretty good DPS, uh, I mean, pretty good defense considering the, uh, um, you see, a yeah, pretty good pretty good health right there. Um, considering the Venture 3's base toughness is whatever, 1850 or something like that. So I've gone up pretty significantly in toughness, in addition to having the hardener activated the entire time I'm mining, and being positioned in a, in a way where I can get out immediately, and have enough time to get one or two um, shield regenerator, medium shield regenerator ticks in to keep myself alive. So that's the video. I don't want to make this crazy long. Um, I am filming on my other phone. Sorry for the lack of face cam. Um, but uh, that's it. Love you guys a long time. Randy out. Mind safe. Fly safe. And blood for the blood god. Yes. I don't actually know how to turn this off. We're just...